Have you ever wondered how your body manages to turn that sandwich you just ate into energy for your cells? Our bodies are extraordinary machines, and the digestive system is one of the most fascinating aspects. It's a complex network that works around the clock to break down food into nutrients and energy that our cells can use. Imagine the digestive system as an intricate assembly line. The journey begins when you take your first bite. This bite, now in your mouth, is physically broken down by your teeth and chemically broken down by enzymes in your saliva. This is the first step in a process known as digestion. The food then travels down the esophagus and into the stomach, where it is bathed in a potent cocktail of stomach acid and enzymes. These substances further break down the food, turning it into a semi-liquid mass called chyme. Next, the chyme enters the small intestine, which is the star player in the nutritional game. Here, the process of absorption begins. The small intestine, with its millions of tiny finger-like projections called villi, absorbs the nutrients from the chyme and sends them into the bloodstream. But digestion doesn't stop there. The leftover indigestible material moves into the large intestine, where water and electrolytes are absorbed, and the remaining waste is compacted into stool, ready for elimination. Throughout this process, the alimentary canal, which stretches from the mouth to the anus, performs crucial secretory functions. It releases digestive enzymes, mucus, and hormones that aid in the breakdown and absorption of food. These functions are controlled by a complex system of neurohumeral signals. Simply put, our brain and hormones play a vital role in managing our digestion. They tell our digestive system when to start breaking down food, when to absorb nutrients, and when to move waste along. Understanding these processes is crucial to recognizing when things go wrong, as in the case of digestive disorders. But that's a topic for another time. For now, let's marvel at the intricate dance our bodies perform every day to keep us nourished and energized. So what happens when this finely tuned system encounters a problem? Imagine the digestive system as an assembly line. When everything is working as it should, it's a well-oiled machine. But throw in a few spanners and things can quickly go awry. These spanners come in the form of digestive disorders, which can disrupt the secretory functions of the alimentary tract. Let's take gastroesophageal reflux disease, or GEARD, as an example. This disorder occurs when stomach acid frequently flows back into the tube connecting your mouth and stomach. This acid reflux can irritate the lining of your esophagus, leading to heartburn and other uncomfortable symptoms. The secretory function is compromised, as the stomach produces too much acid, causing an imbalance in the digestive process. Moving along the assembly line, we come to peptic ulcers. These are sores that develop in the lining of your stomach, upper small intestine, or esophagus. Here, the problem lies with the mucus that protects your stomach from digestive juices. When this mucus is reduced, it causes an overexposure to these juices, resulting in ulcers. Again, the secretory function is affected, this time by an underproduction of protective mucus. Finally, let's consider irritable bowel syndrome, or IBS. This is a common disorder that affects the large intestine. Symptoms include cramping, abdominal pain, bloating, gas, and diarrhea, or constipation. IBS is a chronic condition that requires long-term management. In this case, the secretory function is disrupted because the intestines either move too quickly, leading to diarrhea, or too slowly, leading to constipation. These are just a few examples of how the secretory functions of the alimentary tract can be disrupted, leading to digestive disorders. Each disorder presents its own challenges and requires a unique approach to treatment and management. As we can see, Disruptions to our digestive system can have significant effects on our health and well-being. But how does the body regulate these complex digestive processes? This is where the fascinating world of neurohumeral control comes into play. The term neurohumeral control might sound intricate, but it's actually a straightforward concept. It's all about how our nervous system and hormones work hand in hand to manage our digestion. Picture our digestive system as a bustling city. The nervous system is like the traffic control center, sending signals to keep everything moving smoothly. It uses a network of nerves and neurotransmitters such as acetylcholine and norepinephrine to send messages between the brain and the digestive tract. Think of it this way, when you eat, your brain sends a signal via the nervous system to your stomach, telling it to get ready for the incoming food. This is why sometimes just the smell of food can make you feel hungry. It's your brain communicating with your stomach. 
Now let's talk about the hormonal control. Hormones are like the city's public announcements, spreading messages far and wide. The digestive system uses hormones like gastrin, secretin, and cholecystokinin to regulate various functions, such as stomach acid production or the release of digestive enzymes. For instance, when food enters your stomach, cells in your stomach lining release gastrin, which signals for more stomach acid to be produced. This acid helps break down the food so it can be easily digested. So you see, the nervous system and hormones are like two sides of the same coin, working together in perfect harmony to control our digestion. It's a finely tuned system, with each part playing a crucial role. It's like a symphony orchestra with the nervous system as the conductor, hormones as the musicians, and digestion as the beautiful music they create together. This delicate balance of control mechanisms ensures our digestive system functions smoothly. But remember, even the best orchestras can hit a wrong note. In our next scene, we'll explore what happens when things go wrong with neurohumoral control, leading to digestive disorders. This delicate balance of control mechanisms ensures our digestive system functions smoothly. When these control mechanisms falter, the result can be a digestive disorder. So, let's dive deeper into how disruptions to neurohumoral control can contribute to these conditions. The neurohumoral system, a complex network of nerves and hormones, plays a significant role in regulating digestion. The harmony of this system ensures the smooth operation of the digestive tract. But when there's a disruption, it can lead to a cascade of problems. Stress, for example, is a major disruptor of neurohumoral control. It triggers the release of stress hormones, like cortisol, which can interfere with the normal functioning of the digestive system. This can lead to disorders such as irritable bowel syndrome, or IBS, where the communication between the brain and the gut is impaired. In addition, disruption of the neurohumoral control can also impact the secretory functions of the digestive system. Normally, hormones and nerves signal the stomach, pancreas, and gallbladder to release digestive enzymes and bile at the right time. But when this signaling is off, these secretions can occur at the wrong time or in the wrong amounts, leading to disorders like gastritis, pancreatitis, or gallstones. Furthermore, neurohumoral disruptions can also affect the muscles that move food through the digestive tract. This can lead to conditions like gastroesophageal reflux disease, or GERD, and gastroparesis, where the stomach cannot empty properly. So, disruptions to neurohumoral control can have wide-ranging impacts on the digestive system, from these secretory functions to the movement of food through the tract. These disruptions can be triggered by various factors, including stress, certain medications, and underlying health conditions. But why does this matter? because understanding these connections can be key to diagnosing and treating digestive disorders. By recognizing the role of the neurohumoral system in digestion, healthcare professionals can develop targeted treatments to address these disruptions and help manage digestive disorders more effectively. In conclusion, the neurohumoral control is more than just a regulator of the digestive system. It's a delicate balance that, when disrupted, can lead to a multitude of digestive disorders. Understanding these connections can be key to diagnosing and treating digestive disorders. So what can we do when our digestive system isn't working as it should? Well, the answer is multifaceted, just like our digestive system itself. There's no one-size-fits-all solution, as each digestive disorder requires its own unique approach to treatment. However, some common strategies can be applied to manage and treat these conditions. Dietary changes are often the first line of defense. Certain foods can trigger digestive issues, so identifying and eliminating these from our diet can lead to significant improvements. For example, lactose intolerance requires a diet free from lactose, while celiac disease necessitates a strict gluten-free diet. Medications are another critical aspect of treatment. For some, over-the-counter medications can provide relief, while others might need prescription drugs. Antacids can neutralize stomach acid in cases of reflux, while antibiotics can treat bacterial infections in the gut. Probiotics can also be helpful, promoting a healthier gut flora and aiding digestion. In more severe cases, surgical intervention may be required. This might involve removing diseased sections of the digestive tract in conditions like Crohn's disease or repairing anatomical abnormalities like hernias. What's most important, however, is early diagnosis and treatment. Digestive disorders can often be managed effectively if detected early, which is why regular checkups and discussions with your healthcare provider are crucial. 
don't ignore persistent symptoms, they could be signaling a more serious underlying issue. In addition to these treatments, lifestyle modifications can also play a pivotal role in managing digestive disorders. Regular exercise, adequate hydration, stress management, and sufficient sleep can all contribute to a healthier digestive system. Remember, our bodies function as a whole and everything is interconnected. Finally, it's vital to remember that every individual is unique. What works for one person may not work for another. Therefore, a personalized approach to treatment guided by a healthcare professional is essential. With the right treatment, many people with digestive disorders can lead healthy, normal lives. So don't despair if you are struggling with a digestive disorder. There are numerous treatment options available, and with the right approach, you can manage your condition effectively.